And we've got the Vikings, creative quarterback. He's your top dog in the league this season, ranking first in passing yards. It's the Vikings and the Falcons, just ahead on EA Sports. The weather this time of year in the South, perfect fall football weather. And we've got the roof wide open here in Mercedes-Benz Stadium in the heart of Georgia. Today, it's a Week 9 matchup. We are all set to go as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon along with Charles Davis. And Charles, we take a look at this Falcons team as they interplay. They come in off their very first loss of the year, suffered a week ago. Yeah, it will not be a perfect season, but I'm interested to see how they bounce back now that they know that chasing the 1972 Dolphins is out the window. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Vikings, they're halfway home, looking good at a perfect 8-0. And not much to complain about so far, is there? I'd have to say they're the best team in the NFL through the first half of the year. The first two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? Braxton Berrios now from his end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Falcons ready to go to work here on offense. And at the helm in his second season, Charles, it's Desmond Ritter. Well, his ratio was good last week. Most quarterbacks are really excited about a three-to-one ratio, but it's flipped in the wrong direction. <laughs> he threw three interceptions, not touchdown passes, and he only had the one TD pass in that game. So he's trying to turn that around and find a way for his team to win. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. The numbers in last week's ball game for Robinson, 14 carries, 51 yards. When a winning streak stretches this far, you start to wonder if a team is truly unstoppable. And here's a guy who's been very much the legs that have helped drive this team to wins week after week. And even when teams have keyed on him and tried to slow him down, he's still gotten the job done enough to avoid a loss. Talking with him in pregame, though, he thinks that this week could be his biggest week yet. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Ritter. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Here's Bradley Pinion now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he's able to get it out of there. And he'll take it just outside the 40. We'll call that a 49-yard punt, but a net of just 39 following the 10-yard return. And the Vikings, they'll be set up well as they take over in great field position, first and 10. So now you've got their offense coming out for the first time with great initial field position. And a look at a guy, definitely got a little razzle-dazzle to him. Can do it with his arm or his legs. Their mobile QB. And I think if you ask most folks to give you their first-half MVP, 
very likely they're going to say it's this man right here. The NFL's leader in touchdown passes to this point in the season. Still two months to go. But if he can keep going to the pace he's at, this is going to be a dangerous team come January, and he could very well walk away with the MVP. Here's second and eight. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. So they'll get nothing out of that play. And third and eight now. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That gain on third down, good for 28. Well, this is what you want to see from your rookie quarterback on an opening drive, Charles. He looks cool. He looks calm. He looks collected in marching them down the field. And, Brandon, I just think the game continues to change and evolve because we're calling these guys rookies. But, you know, they've thrown the football so much at a younger level now, way more so than what we saw when guys came into the league when you and I came through. And also, just the way in particular to him, Charles, how he handles himself in meetings, just so professional and mature. It looks like he's been in the league five years. Yeah, he cares about the game. He cares about his performance, and it's showing. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. One thing that you're going to see from this offense is that they love the matchup with their wide receivers against this secondary. That one wasn't successful, but don't expect them to back away from attacking all game long. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. A great effort there with a lucky number 13 touchdowns now on the year. And the Vikings will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. I'll let you do the analysis, partner, but with every touchdown pass his young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed, aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen. And it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. Their dreams of an undefeated season shattered with the loss a week ago. Now look, whenever an undefeated team goes down, you always hear some say, well, they needed that. I don't know, Charles. Is that a narrative that you buy into? Well, I haven't met a coach yet that feels like they needed that loss. You know, that's not something that they're in favor of. But I do know this. People like us, our colleagues, all of us in the media, constantly hammering a team that's undefeated. Hey, do you think you can do it the whole season? Can you carry it the whole way? That does wear down a group. And sometimes that loss, get us off your back, you can move forward from there. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all Levin on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. The Ritter back to throw. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game, and now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Second down and a run by Robinson. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Boy, a tough spot here as they approach the line of scrimmage. A long way to go to try to pick up this first down. Ritter cannot escape and they bring him down. Micah Parsons racking up sack number 12 for him on the year. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Fielded at the 20. 
It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. And it will be Vikings ball first and ten. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they, as mentioned, unbeaten to this point in the year. But you think this game, their toughest test yet. I absolutely do because, to me, this is a good measuring stick game because they've been able to take advantage of the schedule. But here, this is another team leading its division with an eye on making a Super Bowl run. So this game is crucial. That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. Well, that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. And let's face it, all of them, they all want to be number one. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. The numbers on Moss from last week's game. Eight catches, a touchdown to go along with 124 yards. And he leads the NFL in receiving yards as we come down the home stretch. Weather may be changing across the country, but his consistency remains the same. Now a throw here to his running back. Short completion, just four yards, and it brings up third and five now. now you and I, partner, we got the prom assignment this week. An unbeaten team against a one-loss team. Really not much separating these two entering play here today. Not much at all. I think for both coaches, they've looked at their team and said, guys, you got to know what you're getting into in this one, and you better be ready to go because you get to answer the big question of the day. Are we as good as we think we are? We're about to find out. Back to throw again. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game. It has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. How about the challenge we're seeing here in this game early? Man coverage against some fleet receivers. That time, the defense won. And his kick is gone. And that will extend their lead even further. So that Charles, a season long, and uh, since he's a rookie, I guess we can go ahead and call that a career long as well. I love how you put that together because, you know, there's <laughs> everyone at home was saying, okay, has to be career, right, since he's a rookie. Well done by you, but I definitely like what I've seen from him so far this year. Very distinguished college career. He's looking right at home here in the NFL. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Just the one misstep for them in the first half of the season. 7-1 is the record at the midway point. And in terms of whatever power rankings you want to go by, they're at or near the top of the list in terms of best teams in the National Football League. And for me and my little bit of rankings here, I've got them at the top. I know there's still two months to go. And we've seen teams get off the hot starts and then fade away due to injuries or the schedule or whatever. But unless there are a rash of injuries on this team, I'd be surprised if they are a first or a second seed come playoff time. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles. And that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because the entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance. They've got to get the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. So here are the Vikings to take over. They've gone two months without a loss. Eight straight wins for them. And they've got the lead here in this one as well. Trying to make it nine in a row. Ooh, the juke. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 
25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. Well, pardon, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I'd love to come downfield, hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. You can see the time and effort and thought that they've put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They'll drop to throw. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop any like that one. Second down. Here's second and ten. Second down and ten. They're going to look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Moss. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. Here's third and six. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Falcons grab it. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does. And I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame. And any time he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. Pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. Hey, look at this defense for the Vikings. This crew against the pass, it's been a real struggle. Second from the bottom in the NFL, number 31. And when you're getting ready to face the number one overall offense in the NFL. Looking there for points, but intercepted. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. And this Charles definitely not what they were wanting to see. Remember, he threw three interceptions in the loss last week, and now he gives the ball away again here in the very first quarter. And you have to think that this was drilled into him all week, too, by his teammates, by his coaching staff. They've told him all week long, we've got to protect the football. They probably crossed that fine line with giving him the right advice and saying it too much. And it turned out that it got into his head a little bit. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. Now he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Brings up second and nine. He'll drop to throw. That's caught by the big tight end, TJ Hawkinson. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And now it's third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Bud Dupree off the edge and getting to the quarterback. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down. They still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. And his kick is indeed good, and that will extend their lead even further. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And Charles, you look at these two teams, and these are those kind of litmus test games in the second half of the season that if you're a coach or a player, you can either really look forward to them or really dread them, depending on your point of view. 
And if you're dreading them, you're not going to go very far in the playoffs. You need to look forward to these kind of games because here we've got two division leaders, both real contenders for the NFC title. And you're right, you love having easy games on your schedule, but you need some games like this to toughen you up a bit and ensure that you're ready for the shock of playoff football. Ritter cannot escape, and they bring him down. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. Out of the gun, here's Ritter. He's going to air one out. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. They've had multiple opportunities on offense and still haven't scored any points. Felt like they wanted to loosen things up, throw it downfield, and see if maybe they could get a big play and a quick strike. 39 yards on the punt, just two on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. He was defended by Michael Walker. They'll try and run this one right up the gun. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Thus far, they've been able to move the line of scrimmage very well in the running game. Almost felt like they said in the huddle, can you guys pass protect? Let's take a big shot downfield. Didn't get it on that one, but they may come back to it again. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. So out come the Falcons now. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. They start on the ground with Robinson here. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards. Now Robinson coughs up the football. It's loose. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. And they call it a loss of a yard there. And it'll be fourth down. No surprise they decided to throw on third down. A little bit of a surprise that they completed the pass and lost yardage on the play. Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want a challenge, and they're going to get one. The previous play is under review. The thing that they'll be looking at is a spot of the football, and uh, this is always such a tough one for officials to get exactly right. Not just because of how fast the game's going, but just trying to get the right sight line to the football, that's not always easy. We'll see what they decide here. So winds up a very smart decision to throw the flag. They reset the spot, and now that's a first down. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Now here's Bradley Pinion now.
The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and they will take over first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Brings up second and 10 at the 24-yard line. Back to throw. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. Five yards, now it's third and five. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Right up to that point, I was about to say, he's had a pretty good half catch in the football, but... Let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Taken in at the 22. And nine yards there on the return following a punt of 47. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That one covers 29 yards, first down. And this may be the one to build on right here. It's the second quarter. They've got nothing on the scoreboard as of yet. They need to put something together, and this is a good start as they get the completion there for good yardage and a first down. On first and 10, it's Algier. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That felt like a trap, because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. Then everyone crashed the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. And now off to the races, down the right side. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And they'll turn to a power game to try to get in. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Algier will get down close to the goal line, but not in as he'll be marked down at the one. They're knocking on the door as they come to the line here on third and goal from the one. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. With the way things have gone in this game, I think they've got to consider going for it here. I realize it's just the second quarter, so they're not panicking, but they need something to give them positive momentum to get things going. Ritter looking to throw here on fourth. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Joe Smith, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy did a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. 
And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. Now second and nine. At the 45-yard line. Now back to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 41-yard line. And I like the idea here. Get the ball in his hands, even if it's in the passing game. Three catches a week ago, and he does a nice job here to pick up yardage. The throw over the middle taken in. Flashed the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stop short of the 35. From the 37, they work on second and six. At the 37-yard line. They'll set up a throw. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. And the Vikings first down. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And a hard work and run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. 40 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Looking to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Ball at the eight here for second and a yard. Maybe a touch less. They'll look to throw here. A quick throw, but incomplete. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. The third down battle run by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. Give them credit for excellent coverage. Tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown from eight yards out. And the Vikings had six to their lead. Charles, every time that he makes one of these plays, I, I think the front office, they get a bigger and bigger collective smile because they feel more confident that they... And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs. And I think they're going to at least take a look at this. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review. So they had it right. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead now stands at 13. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Berrios now from his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. On first down, Ritter. And he'll complete this one to Berrios. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. From the 25, here's second and six. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. Ritter off to play fake. Targeting Pitts on the out route, and he's got it complete. 
And that will get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Looking to throw it here, Ritter. Throwing for Smith on the out route, and it's caught. Clock running, and the Falcons moving with a sense of urgency. Going play action, Ritter. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The second in the NFL in interceptions, and you understand why. He plays the game with great intelligence, understands positioning, and has a great ability to break on the football when it's in the air. So fun to watch his closing speed, and another example of it on that play. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. This one brought in by Jefferson. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts. Out of the gun now on third down. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. They'll look to throw again. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. Again, he'll drop to throw. Complete, Jefferson the target. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another good completion on the drive as the Vikings have a first down. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And this one is no good. He missed it. And the lead will hold at 13. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, all right, Brandon. Thank you very much. Hi again, everyone. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the NFL as we are officially into the second half of the season. We'll begin up at legendary Lambeau Field in Green Bay. And it's the Packers who have the lead as that game approaches halftime. Jordan Love with a couple of touchdown tosses. Next, we head down to Houston to check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And they've got the lead in their matchup with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Two touchdowns there for Damian Pierce. Finally, let's get down to the Bayou. Check in on the Saints at home at the Caesars Superdome. As you can see, the score there in the second quarter. The Bears try and hold on and claim victory. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. 
This offense set to begin the third quarter, and Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead, and they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game and down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it, and try and win this ball game. Second and 10. He'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Again, a good friend in football always talks about predictive history. He's got one of their two touchdowns. You can understand why they tried to find him again. Weren't able to connect, but the thought, that was good. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And it will be Falcon football. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced the punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. They go with the empty set there, five receivers in the formation. Normally, you want to have a running back in to block, but in this case, he's lined up to the right, and he ends up getting the football. A lot of confusion caused defensively, and it turns into a big play. Robinson on a give right side, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running. Touchdown! Matt Collins, 57 yards. And the Falcons have cut it back within a score. Well, Charles, he's still a young signal caller in this league, second year in the NFL. But I don't know if last year as a rookie if he would have worked through his progressions like he did on that touchdown pass. I think you're right about that. We're seeing him grow up right in front of our eyes because when he went to his primary read, he recognized that they were all over that. So he continued to survey the field, picked up another target, delivered a pass exactly where it needed to be. A very mature play for the second year quarterback. And the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Pretty important third-quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 53 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at him and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield. And this might be a roughing call. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. They'll send Moss in motion right. They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead a handoff up the middle. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Here's a second and eight. He'll drop to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. 
And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 35. And the Vikings' first down. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Completes it to the fullback hand. Even with the good footwork, he'll be stopped just inside the 35. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's second down. They're going to look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 14. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Back to throw again. And he's got his big wide receiver complete. And the Vikings are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. First and goal at the two-yard line. They go play action here on first down. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Bud Dupree able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Moved back to the 10. They'll try on second and goal here. They'll set up to throw. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. They'll look to throw. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I think that's a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. So three points in a response there to that opening touchdown of this third quarter. And that's an important three, both in terms of adding to your lead, but also in letting the other guys know you're not going to just come out in the second half and take over. Barrio is going to bring this out of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time out, Charles. Remember, they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. Meanwhile, Ritter's throw complete there to Smith. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Ritter. And this is going to be incomplete. Wait, we've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it, forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Second and seven, operating from the 34. Now back to throw. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, 
they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. A good pick up there, 26 yards. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that's going to bring up second down. He'll look to throw. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Cook hands that time to knock that one away. It should look like a short touchdown, but able to get a good break on the football and force the incompletion. Third down, he'll drop to throw. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. From 17 yards out. And the Vikings are able to add on to that lead. Well, to put it mildly, he's been able to dice up this secondary all game long. And this time, that was a missile that he threw into the end zone and adding another touchdown to his ledger. And I think we see these youngsters develop a lot quicker than we ever have because when they get started in this game, they're not just throwing passes around. They're and he's going to be taken down. It's a sack, and they fail on the try for two. So tried to throw it in for two points, but the D got home, brought him down. It got home, which means it had to be good coverage. Just had nowhere to go with the ball. Typically, you try and throw quick hitters, quick slants, you know, maybe even a quick fade. Nothing was open. He ends up getting sacked. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings move it away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Atlanta regains possession of the football. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. That'll get a little bit back, give him five on the run, and they'll be left with a third and 13. Brings up third and 13. And Ritter back to throw. And he'll complete this one to Barrios. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. And that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. Vikings turn up the heat and they block it. And he's going to score. It's a Viking touchdown. A great play there. Taking it in. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Well, the Falcons back out getting set for this next drive. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete.
On second down, Ritter. And a throw right sideline is complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. First and 10 at the 47 yard line. First down, here's Ritter. It's brought in by Jamison Crowder. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football right now. I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Ritter looking to throw on first and 10. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. The safety Antoine Winfield got in there that time. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he will maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. And that's also all for this third quarter of play. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. And this offense on third down today, can you believe it? 0 for 9 thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Now, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Here's a give up the middle. 63 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage. They are powering through, and they're controlling this game. Calais Campbell on the stop. Now is second and 10. Brings up second and 10 at the 36-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? No let up in this passing game. They've been a well-oiled machine throughout. And I actually saw a few guys on the sidelines at the end of the third quarter doing the old hold up four fingers college sign, meaning the fourth quarter is ours. And they certainly weren't kidding. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Hands it off out of the gun. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. From the 31, here's a second and eight. Brings up second and eight at the 31-yard line. 
And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. They'll drop to throw. This one caught. It's the tight end, Hawkinson. And he's brought down. 68 yards receiving now for him in the game. And a first down on that last catch as well. But normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter. But the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack. But you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game. And trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. They'll try again, and he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. A great effort there. His eighth rushing touchdown on the year. And the Vikings add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends were on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this crowd, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. Well, things obviously not going their way. Trailing here in the fourth quarter. And that penalty going to go ahead and give the other side some extra yardage. We all know it's an intense game and things can get heated out there. That's part of the battle. But bottom line, you got to keep your cool. That was not an example of doing that. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Falcons ready to take over. And they've got some stuff to build on from that last try because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. Looking to throw it here, Ritter. And his throw is incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. On first down, Ritter. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Looking to throw once more. Here's Ritter. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Here's Ritter. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's going to be a yard short. Needed four, but got three. Yeah, and on third down, you know those pass rushers, they're in the starter's block. They're just waiting for the pistol to fire. You can almost hear the defensive coaches on the sideline pre-snap. Watch the screen. Watch the screen. Really good job there of identifying it and making the play to force fourth down. 
And he is going to have a Falcons first down. Well, they take a chance there on fourth and one, but it's a gain of three and a new set of downs. Ritter will set up to throw it. Man open here is Crowder. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Falcon passing game looking good on this drive as they get the first down. Ritter headed right off the option. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Second and 10 at the 16-yard line. Now this is going to be a quarterback draw. A tough run gets him just inside the 10 to the 9, but no further. A keeper gets him 7 that time, but it'll lead to a third down. Brings up third and three. Back to throw, Ritter. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. I'll tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice, long, soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. Yeah, once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. Fourth down, big play. Here's Ritter. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth, and we've seen them do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. On play action, they'll throw. Complete, Jefferson the target. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Now the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Arnold Ebikati gets there for the stop. Now second and five. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On third down, they're going to run for it here. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 103 yards rushing for him now as he's done it on 19 carries. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And even playing on the road, the class of this ball club just too much to overcome. Yeah, deep down, I think even the fans knew how this one was going to turn out. All right, They, they just came to support their team, hoped they'd see some good football, and they did. 
but they didn't really expect their team to win. In fact, they probably came in and said, let's win the tailgate, because that, <laughs> that's where we have the advantage, and I bet they did that. So for the Vikings, the train just keeps rolling 9-0 and now to start this campaign, and they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Falcons, it's just their second loss so far to go along with their seven wins. And they'll try to rebound next week as they head to Glendale to take on the Cardinals. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.